Halloween, or should I say Halloween? Today we're going to be discussing the pagan origins of Halloween and we're going to be discussing the truth about this hella day so you can see the whole truth and nothing but the truth today. For many years, we have been conditioned to believe that Halloween is all about trick-or-treating and candy, bobbing for apples, pumpkin carvings and jack-o'-lanterns, skulls, skeletons, druids, bubble, bubble, toil, and trouble, as well as honoring the dead, giving homage to the dead, and paying tribute to the dead. But where does this holiday really come from, and why is it celebrated and hallowed today? That and more to come. As you may or may not have known, Halloween has been regarded as a celebration for thousands and thousands of years, only it originates from and traces its origins all the way back to what's known today as Samhain. Now what Samhain is, is that it's one of the eight major Celtic holidays, and it's also known as the eighth and final one, and it also marks a final Sabbath. Now it's also known as the Witch's New Year, and it marks the end of the harvest season, halfway between the fall equinox as well as the winter solstice. Samhain is a time to celebrate the dead as well as honor and pay homage to those who have passed on and paying respects to the elders and their ancestors to those who have died and passed on to another life and during this time many also partake in sacrifices bonfires pagan festivals and dancing too there is also magic witchcraft sorcery spells and summoning that is also involved during this time, a lot of child sacrificing would also occur, in which children were to be sacrificed to animal idols and passed through the fire to be sacrificed so that sacrifices could be made around the same time as Samhain. And this is also known and commonly called Molech worship, which is also practiced in present day Hollywood, or should I say Hollywood, even to this day. And the reason that you see Halloween being associated and attributed with the nighttime is because it worships and honors the dead, henceforth the graveyards, demons, full moons, bats, owls, ghosts, ghouls, goblins, as well as scary jack-o'-lanterns, which is also where scary stories originate from. And then there's also the Druids, which is the Celtic priests who also celebrate this pagan festival where they would gather together and dance and circle around as you see here and sacrifice to their idols. Let's not forget about the ancient history because even sources agree according to the Encyclopedia Britannica 2005 edition as well as the cultural history of Halloween, National Geographic, Harper's Encyclopedia of Mystical and Paranormal Experience along with any others which all say and agree that Halloween or should I say Halloween has had and traced its origins all the way back to Samhain. And now we're going to be giving a brief timeline of Halloween because did you know that nothing new is under the sun when it comes to jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkin decorating? Because even in the ancient African times and Indian times and many other cultures, carving gourds into elaborately decorated lanterns dates back thousands of years to Africa as well as many other places. Not to mention how the ancient Celts also believed that wearing masks would ward off the evil spirits and this was done between the 800s and the 450 BCs done thousands of years ago and that is where you see masks coming in, hence masks being sold today even in mainstream stores. And then there's also Samhain, which is the festival to celebrate the end of the Gaelic harvest that's typically on October 31st through November 1st. And this comes pre-first century, so well over 2,000 years ago. And by the first century, by AD 43, Romans had conquered much of Celtic territory. Two Roman festivals were combined with the Celtic celebration of Samhain, Feralia, which is a day in late October when Romans commemorate 
commemorated the passing of the dead and a day to honor Pomona, who was the Roman goddess of fruit and trees. Not to mention the different bonfires, which also played a major role, where celebrants wore costumes, mostly of skin and animal heads, and danced around the bonfires as early as 1st century AD. And the reason that they would wear these costumes is because these costumes were used as a defense mechanism and a tool to ward and aid off demons and to disguise oneself from the demons, hence costumes being sold and on display at mainstream stream stores today. And we cannot forget about the monsters because throughout ancient history, shades meant that the spirit of a dead person resided in the underworld and this is ancient thought and theory, but the Gales also believed that the border between this world and the underworld became thin on Samhain because animals and plants were dying. It allowed the dead to reach back through the veil that separated them from the living as of 1st century AD, as well as the common creatures known as werewolf and the original werewolf of classical mythology Lycaon, who was the king of Arcadia who, according to Ovid's metamorphosis, was turned into a ravenous wolf by Zeus. And as far as jack-o'-lanterns go, here is a brief and quick history. During the ancient times, the Celts would use pumpkins in order to ward out evil demons from getting to them, as well as using them to sacrifice to their many idols. But did you know that it was more than just pumpkins that were used? In ancient Irish folklore, turnips, apples, beets, and other fruits and vegetables were hollowed out in order to ward from the evil and other demonic forces. And what they would do is that they were carved with faces to help light the way for traveling wards and to scare the ghosts away. And in case you're wondering where jack-o'-lantern comes from and why that term is prominently used for pumpkins and many other carvings, during the Celtic sacrifices and the rituals, common stories would also be told, as well as mythical folklore, and one of the stories that was commonly told was the story of Jack, also known as the Jack story, where Jack tricks the devil into agreeing to never collect his soul, hence jack-o'-lantern. Of course, we have trick-or-treating, which is very common and prominent in America today. But what many do not know is that trick-or-treating actually comes from a term known as guising, which is the practice or custom of disguising oneself in fancy dress or often with the mask and visiting people's homes and houses in order to exchange for food and drink, which is what the Celtics have done thousands and thousands of years ago, even to this day, even as we see done today on Halloween night. And as we also mentioned earlier, the costumes that were worn were also worn to impersonate the evil spirits, especially costumes that have black or white in them. And then, of course, we cannot forget about the soul cakes, which were given with crosses on them to represent a soul being freed from purgatory. Or the better question is, was it really? the tradition known as bobbing for apples, which represents fertility and immortality and also has to do with the tree of knowledge. And also back then, girls would do this and girls specifically would bob their heads for apples as a practice and ritual for divine purpose with many other pagan customs and cultures and traditions that's commonly associated with Halloween as well as the abuse and the satanic abuse and rituals as well because this even says X witch reveals the ritual satanic abuse that happens on Halloween night. X witch Beth says she used to love Halloween until she connected the dots. So the next time you're thinking about taking your children to go trick-or-treating or even trick-or-treating for yourself, and the next time you think about bobbing for apples or even jack-o'-lanterns, you'll know the real truth and origin behind Halloween, or should I say Halloween. 
because the word of our father even tells us in Exodus chapter 20 that we're not even to bow down or worship any idols whatsoever, nor are we to have any figures or idols of humans, gold and silver or whatsoever in our homes or anywhere. Leviticus chapter 19 verses 31 tells us that we are not to have any witchcraft or sorcery or be involved with any type of familiar spirits or necromancy, which is honoring the dead. And Leviticus 19.4 even tells us that we are not to be practicing idolatry whatsoever. But did you also know that Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 5 also mentions scarecrows because Halloween was celebrated even during the ancient scriptural times and we know that nothing new is under the sun. And so rather than walking in darkness and rather than celebrating and honoring and giving homage to the dead, you can rather instead seek Yahuwah and his true son Yahusha and honor the living and honor what's alive and serve the living and start to learn about the feast days of our father, which is mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23, and start to learn about the truth of our father Yahuwah and our Mashiach Yahusha, because the truth will make you free. This is Truth Unveiled here, saying peace, love, and shalom.